I've been a fan of the G.I. Joe comic book since I was a child. The original Marvel Comics run was the first comic I read on a regular basis. It was different from other comics. It didn't have superheroes. It didn't have magic. The heroes were human. They could bleed, they could fail, they could die. After I moved on from G.I. Joe, it took a couple years before I could take superhero comics seriously. I had to suspend my disbelief of superpowers and mystical forces before I could appreciate the stories and the characters. As I learned to enjoy mainstream superhero comics, it became clear that they treated death very differently than G.I. Joe. At least in my era, Death in a G.I. Joe comic book was more or less permanent. You know, like actual death. That's why I was surprised to learn, many years later, of the death of Snake Eyes. Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And this week I am proud to welcome Shabu from the YouTube channel Codename New2 Vero2. Thank you, HCC788. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Shabu RU. My channel, Codename New2 Vero2, we actually cover the modern G.I. Joe comics. Often I'll go into the Marvel run and try to cross reference because a lot of the current stories actually began in the Marvel run. So it's kind of good to blend the new and the old, so old readers and new readers alike get a good mixture. Now we also look at other uh, Titans from the 80s and 90s, like He-Man, Voltron, Transformers, etc. But 90% of the time, we're stuck on G.I. Joe, and rightfully so. Thanks for being here. We'll hear more from Codename New2 Vero2 later in this video. I needed a little help this week. We need to talk about something that happened long after the vintage G.I. Joe era ended. I invited Codename New2 Vero2 to talk about the death of Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes is one of the most popular G.I. Joe characters of all time. In his all black uniform, he exuded coolness and mystery. He was given a ninja backstory by the comic book writer Larry Hama. He is the most developed character in the comic book, which is impressive for a character that does not speak. The Marvel Comics series ended with issue number 155, but that was not the end of the story. Larry Hama picked up the Marvel continuity and continued it with a series for IDW, and that series is still running. It was in that IDW series that Larry said goodbye to one of his favorite characters. Today Today we're going to look at the Snake Eyes action figure from 1989. We're going to take that opportunity to look at how he met his end. HCC 788 presents Snake Eyes. This is Snake Eyes, version 3, G.I. Joe's Commando from 1989. This figure was first available in 1989. It was also available in 1990. It was discontinued for 1991. One of the most popular characters from the first series of G.I. Joe in 1982 makes the bridge from the 80s to the 90s. 1989 was a throwback year because Snake Eyes wasn't the only 1982 character to get a new version that year. 1989 also had Stalker version 2 and Rock and Roll version 2. There is a very minor variation on this Snake Eyes. Some figures are stamped on the back made in Hong Kong, while others are stamped made in China. I do not seek out country of origin variations because life is too short and I have better things to do. There were six versions of Snake Eyes in the vintage line. We've already looked at most of them. In 19 in 1982 there was version 1, followed by version 1.5 in 1983. Only minor differences between version 1 and version 1.5. Then there was version 2 in 1985. This is probably the most popular version. It came with the wolf, Timber. 
The version 3 from 1989 is the figure we are looking at in this video. Version 4 from 1991 was a departure from the traditional black uniform. They added blue and gray and some orange accessories. In 1993 we got version 5, the Ninja Force Snake Eyes, and in 1994 we got version 6, the Shadow Ninjas Snake Eyes. The first version of Snake Eyes from 1982 was all black and unpainted. The lack of paint was a cost-cutting measure. In 1982, they cut costs in a lot of ways. Most figures shared parts. By making one figure with no paint, they were able to add paint to other figures, such as the 1982 Stalker. We may have Snake Eyes to thank for the awesome camouflage paint application on Stalker. Snake Eyes was popular from the very beginning. He may not have had paint, but the all-black outfit made him cool. There's an aspect of Snake Eyes that is not mentioned anywhere on the packaging. Snake Eyes is unable to speak. His vocal cords were destroyed, along with his face, in a helicopter accident. He is a disabled veteran. According to the Marvel Comics continuity, Snake Eyes had a relationship with one of his G.I. Joe teammates and another character from 1982, Scarlet. Despite the popularity of the character, there was not a Snake Eyes figure on the pegs every year. 1985's version 2 was discontinued after the 1986 series. There was no Snake Eyes in 1987 or 1988. 1991 version 4 was released right after version 3, but version 4 was discontinued for 1992. It was only sold in 1991. There wasn't a Snake Eyes figure on the pegs in 1992. The next version was 1993. It's surprising that Hasbro didn't try to exploit the popularity of this character every single year. The return of Snake Eyes after a two-year gap was a big deal. This new outfit even had its own origin, as told in the comic book. The popularity of the character can be a hazard. Popular characters risk being overexposed. At one point, Snake Eyes had top billing on the covers of the comic book series. His origin and background were expanded and explored to the point that it got kind of convoluted and hard to follow. Let's take a look at Snake Eyes' accessories, starting with his primary weapon, which the card contents call an Uzi. And you can see right off the bat, this is not exactly an Uzi. It is highly stylized and updated, uh, not exactly like a real-world Uzi. It is molded in gray plastic. It has a hook on the back and a suppressor on the front. Uh, what exactly is the hook for? There's nothing on the figure that uh, looks like you're supposed to hook it on. Uh, it doesn't hook onto the backpack. Um, it is an interesting little feature of the weapon, but uh, not really sure exactly what it's for. The Uzi is Snake Eyes' signature weapon. His first and second versions also came with Uzis. Uh, those two were more realistic than the Uzi that we have here with this version 3. Unfortunately, they they got away from that tradition in later versions of the character. This accessory was reissued a few times, including for 1993 Dr. Mindbender, 1993 Destro, and others. The next accessory we will look at is what the card contents creatively call a three-piece nunchaku. Uh, this is a realistic martial arts weapon, but it is not nunchaku. This accessory is molded in silver plastic. It is essentially a three-section staff, so it is a melee weapon. Each of the sections is held together with rings, and it has studded balls on the ends. This accessory fits in the figure's hand well enough. I would recommend placing it in the figure's hand closer toward the center. On these end pieces, uh, they are thinner toward the connecting rings, so if you put it in his hand at that point, you're less likely to stress the thumbs. This is a real-world martial arts weapon. The Japanese call it a Sensetsukon, and the Chinese Chinese call it Senjigun. Out of curiosity, I put the hook on that Uzi on one of the connecting rings, and it kind of works, so you can use the Uzi as a flail weapon. Next we have the blowgun, which is also molded in that silver plastic. Uh, it is long, it has a grip 
Uh, it has a scope and it has a funnel for the lips. The user is supposed to blow in the back end to fire a dart. It would be a silent weapon, which you would think would be great for Snake Eyes, but this is a problem for Snake Eyes. Since he wears a mask, he would not be able to use this weapon to full effect. He would have to lift up his mask to effectively use it, which of course you can't do on the figure. The grip doesn't allow the figure to hold it to his face anyway. This is just poor design. This is my least favorite accessory. Because he comes with so many accessories, he can't hold all of them. So the blowgun is always the one that gets set aside and left behind. We are not done looking at accessories. They did not skimp on accessories. I will give them that. Next we will look at his sword, another accessory molded in that silver plastic. The sword has a straight blade with four holes in it. This would make the sword lighter and perhaps faster. It has an ornate handle with a ball and claw at the end. Version 2 of Snake Eyes also had a sword, a black sword, and like the version 2 sword, the version 3 sword does not look like an Asian martial arts weapon. With the ornamentation, it almost looks like a medieval European sword or something from a fantasy world like Dungeons and Dragons. Like the version 2 sword, the version 3 sword will holster in the backpack. And now let's look at that backpack. The backpack does have three teeth on one side, and that is for the sword. Uh, this is reminiscent of the version 2 backpack that had a similar system for storing the sword, uh, but the storage for the sword is on the opposite side. The backpack is black. It is small, very slender and tall. It's smaller than the version 2 backpack. It has some details molded on uh, it has what looks like a roll at the top. Um, it has what I think may be ninja claws sculpted on. It has a ridge pattern detail here and what I think are supposed to be grenades. And then it has a molded in rope on the bottom. This backpack was used again for another ninja, a Cobra Ninja, the Night Creeper, in 1990. I like this backpack. I like this backpack a lot. Don't get me wrong, but with all the other accessories this figure comes with, I would have liked this backpack to be a little more substantial. Maybe a way to store some of the other accessories, or even somewhere to hook this Uzi. This version of Snake Eyes had a lot of accessories, but no new timber. This is the biggest disappointment. Snake Eyes is closely tied with the wolf. The wolf appeared in both the comic book and the cartoon series. His wolf companion adds to his mystical quality like it's an animal spirit. You could keep the blowgun and the three-piece staff and just give me a new timber. With the accessories out of the way, let's take a look at the articulation for Snake Eyes. He had the articulation that was standard for G.I. Joe figures well before 1989. He could turn his head from left to right and look up and down. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow that allowed him to bend his arm at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep that allowed him to swivel his arm all the way around. This was an O-ring figure, meaning the figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed him to move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Snake Eyes version 3 starting with his head. And on his head he has a black mask that covers his entire head and face. He has silver goggles with a silver band that wraps around his head, and he has an unpainted earpiece over his right ear. Version 1 of Snake Eyes from 1982 had unpainted goggles. It was a pretty iconic look for him. Version 2 replaced the goggles with a slatted visor. Even though version 2 is more popular, a lot of fans say they prefer the goggles. Version 3 has goggles again, but the paint makes them stand out more. Maybe too much, should the goggles have been black. The chest is a base black plastic color with a texture pattern and some unpainted straps over the shoulders and under the arms and across his back. The most interesting feature is the silver crossed knives on his chest. They are painted silver and molded in. They are not removable. They are large knives with wide blades. The blades have holes in them, I guess to reduce 
reduce the weight. Um, they have silver handles and knuckle guards on the handles. These knives are big and wicked looking. It's also a bit of a departure from earlier versions of Snake Eyes. That silver paint really pops on that black chest. These silver knives are so big, I kind of wish they were removable. His arms, again, are mostly black. He has molded on grenades on his upper arms. He has one on his right upper arm and three on his left upper arm. Moving down his arms, he has silver bands on his forearms. And again, that silver paint really stands out next to the black. His waist piece is a base black plastic color with a silver belt. Not a ton of detail on that belt, but it does have an attachment at his hip that is painted silver. Hard to tell exactly what that is, but it may be ammunition. Moving down to his legs, he has black legs, as you would expect for snake eyes. On his right leg, he has a pouch that looks like it's strapped onto his right leg. He has some unpainted straps that go around his right thigh. On his left leg, he has an unpainted pocket with a ridge pattern that runs up to his hip. Uh, then he has what looks like a texture pattern on his knees. So it looks like he has knee pads, but they're not raised knee pads. It's just a texture pattern on his knees. Uh, then he has some undetailed tall black boots. There is no paint on the legs, and that is fine. Snake Eyes' uniform should be as black as possible. This figure keeps the tradition of the first two versions with the base black plastic, but it also reflects an evolution of the character. Version 1 was all black with no paint. Version 2 was mostly black with very subtle gray details and one spot of silver. Version 3 does away with the gray and goes with all silver details. The figures are becoming progressively less subtle. The evolution takes a giant leap with version 4, losing all of its subtlety. This is barely recognizable as Snake Eyes. Let's take a look at Snake Eyes version 3's file card. This file card was printed on the back of the card on which the figure was packaged. It has his faction as G.I. Joe, of course, and all always. It has a portrait of Snake Eyes here, and I do like this portrait. I think the artwork is excellent. This card art may have been used as a reference for the 1992 Cobra Ninja Vipers card art. His codename is Snake Eyes, and he is the commando. Note there is no hyphen. This is the magic disappearing hyphen. The version 1 file card did not have Snake Eyes' name hyphenated, but the version 2 file card did. His file name is classified. His primary military specialty is infantry. Secondary military specialty is hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor. His birthplace is classified, and his grade is E7. This is mostly the same as his earlier file cards, except he has been promoted. Uh, back in 1985, he was still an E5, but he is now an E7. This top paragraph says, Subject was Ranger qualified and graduated from Rakondo School in Na Trang prior to his service with a long-range recon patrol unit in Southeast Asia. Hey, maybe Snake Eyes' real name is Subject. This Rakondo School is a reference to the reconnaissance school established at Na Trang, a coastal city in Vietnam. The school was established in 1966 and held its last course in December of 1970. Long-range recon Patrol is a reference to the reconnaissance units formed under the orders of General Westmoreland in the Vietnam War. Under Westmoreland's authorization, each infantry brigade or division would have an LRRP unit. The LRRP companies consisted of three platoons, each having five six-man teams. This may seem like minutia, which doesn't matter very much by 1989, many years after the end of the Vietnam War, but it is important 
important to Snake Eyes. It was in his LRRP unit that he first met Stalker and Storm Shadow. Those two people had a great impact on his life. It is generally accepted that he received extensive training in mystic martial arts from the same ninja family that produced Storm Shadow. No official records in existence. Storm Shadow's ninja family is the Arashikage. Arashikage is a Japanese compound word that translates literally to Storm Shadow. The Arashikage was explored in great detail in the comic book series. Storm Shadow is the reason Snake Eyes became a ninja, and Stalker is the reason he became a G.I. Joe. Qualified expert in all NATO and Warsaw Pact small arms, black belt in 12 fighting systems, and highly skilled in the use of edged weapons. And that last sentence is taken almost word for word from the previous file card. This top paragraph is mostly about the Vietnam War, but it doesn't mention Vietnam by name. In 1989, it was still kind of a touchy subject. This bottom paragraph has a quote. It says, What can you say about a good guy who goes bump in the night? The man is the baddest dude in the valley. He scares pit bulls. He should wear a sign on his chest that says, Don't mess, period. The bad guys would like to see him declared illegal under the Geneva Convention. On the other hand, he is kind to small animals. So from this paragraph, I gather, do not mess with him while he is on his period. He is kind to small animals, which does not include pit bulls, but does include wolves. There was a modern version of this Snake Eyes released, and I do happen to have it, so we might as well take a look at it. This is Snake Eyes version 34 from 2008. It was part of the 25th anniversary series. As you can see, this is a modern interpretation of this 1989 Snake Eyes figure. Uh, same basic accessories, uh, same basic design and aesthetic, but with modern articulation and sculpting. He does have some new accessories. He has these night vision goggles, which peg onto the earpiece on the right side of his mask, uh, and they can be flipped down over his eyes. Uh, these are okay, but I'm not a big fan of them. I think they cover up too much of his mask, and I do like the head. I don't want to cover up too much of it. Uh, it is removable. In fact, it's kind of hard to keep in. Uh, so you can take it out and get it out of the way, but then that does leave a hole in the side of his head. He comes with a modern update of that Uzi, and this is a new mold. It is not just a copy of the vintage accessory. It is updated, and I think it looks good. And he has a modern update of that three-section staff uh, with some additional texture pattern on it. Uh, so again, it is updated and it looks all right, uh, but neither of these accessories fit in his hand very well. Uh, it was very difficult for me to get them in his hands uh, and they do also tend to fall out. With those accessories out of the way, we can look at his backpack. Uh, the backpack is silver this time, but it does still have the silver sword. Uh, again, an update from the original it's not exactly the same mold, uh, but it does look pretty good. I can't complain about the sword or the backpack, although I do think the backpack looked better in black. And rounding out the accessories, we have the knives on the chest. On the vintage figure, these knives were just sculpted in, but now the knives are removable. They peg in. Uh, and that's not just one piece. They will come apart, uh, so you can have two knives for the figure to hold. Now, this seems like a good idea in principle, but in practice, I found it very difficult to keep these knives pegged onto the figure. Um, they uh, will peg onto the, that hole in the very center of his chest, um, but it's that not very deep. The, the peg is not very long, so it doesn't peg in very deeply. So this thing just falls out uh, very easily. Also, with the slimmer overall design of the modern figure, those knives now look quite oversized. I mean, they don't necessarily look oversized on the vintage figure, um, but uh, the vintage figure's chest was actually wider than the modern figure. With the slimmer chest, uh, yeah, those knives stick out pretty far. One feature that should be a nice addition is this strap with a hole on it, and that should be able to hook the ooze 
Uzi. So you can actually have a use for that hook on the Uzi. Uh, it should be a nice feature, but I have not found it very easy to get the Uzi hooked on there. But it is possible, so you can hook the Uzi on there. I do like that very much. So he can store the Uzi while he is holding his martial arts weapons. Let's not forget the figure stand. Like most modern figures, he comes with a figure stand that has his name on it. A lot of modern G.I. Joe collectors really like this Snake Eyes figure. Some even consider it to be the definitive Snake Eyes figure. And if you like this version 34 Snake Eyes, I'm glad you do. But for me, this figure exposes some of the problems with modern action figure design. The modern Snake Eyes figure looks great. There's no question about that. This is a really nice looking figure. Uh, it has a nice sculpting. Uh, it has lots of accessories and it has modern articulation. But the accessories can be rather fiddly. The figure does not hold them well. They fall off very easily. The figure has a slimmer overall design than the vintage figure, even though the modern figure is taller than the vintage figure. That makes the knives on the chest seem oversized and they stick out way too far and they do not peg in well at all. If you lightly brush this figure, those knives will turn to an awkward angle or they will fall out. So my conclusion, the modern figure looks great, but I will take the vintage figure all day long. Looking at how Snake Eyes was used in G.I. Joe media, it's hard to imagine any character with more appearances than Snake Eyes. Maybe Cobra Commander, but Snake Eyes was everywhere. In the G.I. Joe animated series, he first appeared in the 1983 miniseries. He was in his version 1 uniform, which was modified a bit for the cartoon. He appeared in his version 2 uniform in the Revenge of Cobra miniseries. He was used less often in the cartoon than he was in the comic. This is usually attributed to the fact that he does not speak. I wonder if that's because the writers couldn't figure out what to do with him, or if it was to avoid upsetting the voice actors by using a character that they did not have to pay an actor for. After the Sunbow series was cancelled, Snake Eyes made his first appearance in the Deke animated series in the episode titled The Sword, but he was wearing his version 4 uniform. He did not make any animated appearances in his version 3 uniform. In the G.I. Joe comic book published by Marvel Comics, Snake Eyes appeared in the very beginning in issue number 1. Through numerous issues and story arcs, it was revealed that Snake Eyes was a Vietnam War veteran who served with his G.I. Joe teammate Stalker and his ninja rival Storm Shadow. Snake Eyes trained as a ninja with Storm Shadow's ninja clan. On one of his first missions with G.I. Joe, his face was disfigured in a helicopter accident, which also destroyed his vocal cords and made him unable to speak. Snake Eyes had a long relationship with his G.I. Joe teammate, Scarlet. Her relationship with him was as important as Stalker's and Storm Shadow's. Both Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow have the Arashikage tattoo on their right arms. That is the mark of the ninja family. That tattoo can be seen on the Storm Shadow version 2 action figure from 1988, but Snake Eyes always has his arms covered so you cannot see the tattoo on the figure. This particular uniform for version 3 has its own origin story in the comic book. In issue number 94, Snake Eyes gets plastic surgery to restore his face, but in the process he is captured by the Baroness. On the cover of issue number 95, Snake Eyes appears in this uniform. It's some awesome artwork by Andy Kubert. The Baroness turns Snake Eyes over to the Cobra Torturers, the Pain Brothers. They are named Desad, Torquemada, and Crispo. Torquemada is a reference to the Grand Inquisitor of the Spanish Inquisition. Inquisition. Desaad was a French nobleman famous for erotic works depicting violence and suffering. His name is the source of the word sadism. Crispo is probably a reference to Andrew Crispo, a New York art dealer accused of imprisoning and torturing victims and participating in the murder of one person. All of these names are references to torture in some form. Snake Eyes escapes and eliminates his captors. 
He takes the clothing and equipment from the Payne brothers and creates a new ensemble, his version 3 uniform. I like this story. It isn't often that a new G.I. Joe uniform is given its own origin story. It made the introduction of this Snake Eyes figure a big deal. Snake Eyes' final appearance in the Marvel comic book was in issue number 155, the issue titled A Letter from Snake Eyes. It was a fitting send-off to the legendary G.I. Joe comic book. Book. That might have been the last we saw of Snake Eyes, but years later, that continuity was picked up and continued at IDW. It was there that Snake Eyes met his end. I will turn it over to Codename New2 Vero2 to talk about the death of Snake Eyes and its impact. In 2015, Larry Hammer and IDW shocked the world in a four part series um, called The Death of Snake Eyes. Now, what's interesting, and probably one can argue, that the impact of this could be similar to when Superman died and left the Justice League. I mean, if you think about it, they're both kind of the face of the organization. So, again, it's arguable, but hey, I think it's right on par with each other. I mean, Snake Eyes passing away has had impact in what's going currently going on in G.I. Joe. And often, um, people that initially were in the storyline were kind of a little disappointed. Not so. I tell people that in order to grasp the magnitude of this, one has to go back to the Marvel run and reread a letter from Snake Eyes. Every single word that Snake Eyes talked about to Sean Collins, a young Sean Collins, on what it means to be a soldier, this four-part series embodies every single word. And it will take on a whole new meaning once you grasp that. Now, issue number three in this uh, four-part series is a silent issue. And I'm going to say it's probably the second best silent issue behind issue number 21. I mean, watching the Joe team say goodbye, Snake Eyes, I mean, I'm man enough to say I had a tear, you know, going down my cheek. It's that moving. So if you would like to, I have more bro each issue broken down in detail over on my channel. But to recap, Snake Eyes had to sacrifice himself to protect the loved ones and mankind from a resurrected one-eyed Serpentor that had assumed crazy new powers. And it was his sacrifice that actually has had the most impact on what's currently going on in G.I. Joe. Let me explain. From the letter to Snake Eyes, Sean Collins went on his own path. Following Snake Eyes, he would be known as Kimikoda, in The Devil's Do and Throwdown, that's where Larry Hama sticks with, and known as the last brother of the Rashikage clan. He would follow in Snake Eyes' footsteps. After Snake Eyes passed away, G.I. Joe did not want Cobra to have any knowledge of Snake Eyes' passing. So Sean assumed the mantle of Snake Eyes. At the same time, a young girl Going up in the Cobra youth was a prodigy. At 14 years old, she was Cobra Commander's bodyguard of all things. And in order to give her that boost, uh, Dr. Mindbender and Cobra Commander decided to hook her up to the brainwave scanner to download all of the memories that they had from capturing Snake Eyes several times. So with all of this files here, files there, all of this got into Don Marino. And what happened is that Snake Eyes, I guess consciousness started to take over Don Marino. So he had control of her mind and body and went on a mission to right some of the wrongs he didn't get to in life. So from issue 245 to 250, known as Dawn of the Rashikage, deals with that. And it was Storm Shadow and Scarlet and everybody else that had to 
you know, kind of tracked down Don Marino and had to talk to Snake Eyes to kind of let go of Don Marino. And I know it sounds cheesy, but just stay with it for a second. So once that's subdued, um, she went through the training and basically now Sean Collins and Don Marino are the two Snake Eyes. One wears the version one outfit, the other wears the version two outfit. Now, as old time fans, you might be like, ah, I'm not gonna like that. But again, remember, Larry Hama isn't pushing toys. So he's working on character development and, you know, storyline. And as a old school fan, you know, I like the military and, you know, the blood and guts type of stuff, kind of like what HCC talks about. I find the modern stories wonderful. I mean, if anything, what I do is I hope that others will go to the comic shops and demand G.I. Joe be back on the shelves because yeah, it's tough to find G.I. Joe in the comic shops nowadays. And that's why I do this. So if people watch the videos, they go to the comic shops, hey, we want G.I. Joe back on the shelves. And then all of a sudden, you know, that keeps the flame going, that gets the numbers up for sale comics, and that makes Hasbro take note. So that's basically my summary of how Snake Eyes is impacting what's going on currently in G.I. Joe. And guys, just to end, now is the time to get back into G.I. Joe. You're gonna, there's three books going on right now. All of them are awesome. So I highly recommend you, you know, follow the channel and then go and get the comics yourselves. Thanks, Shabu. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel. He covers all the modern G.I. Joe comics that I don't cover. Looking at Snake Eyes version 3 overall, I'll put it in the top tier, even though I don't like it quite as much as the first two versions. The silver is a bit overdone. It lacks the subtlety of the first two figures. With all that black, you have to be careful how much other color you add, because most other colors will contrast. Silver can look beautiful on a figure and make a figure feel special, but too much of it can lose a little bit of that effect. The crossed knives on his chest are unique and interesting. The mask and the goggles look great. It's a return to Snake Eyes' original look before the visor. The accessories are a little too much. There are two accessories that could easily be cut out and I would not miss them. What I would love would be an updated sculpt for Timber, the wolf. But we didn't get that with version 3, in fact we didn't get that with any of the later vintage versions of Snake Eyes. Despite these minor criticisms, I think this is a great figure. This looks like Snake Eyes. It keeps with the spirit of the character. Nobody has to tell you who this is, you know who this is at first glance. Not every Snake Eyes figure can say that. I like the modified Uzi, I like the sword, I like the storage on the backpack, all great things. As some of you may know, my favorite G.I. Joe character is Stalker. Snake Eyes is not my favorite, but he's pretty high on the list. Maybe it's a cliche to be a fan of Snake Eyes, but so what? It's a cool figure and a cool character. I'll be on that bandwagon. There was a time when Snake Eyes was maybe a little too cool and took over the main focus of G.I. Joe. He was overexposed and overused and ultimately lost some of his mystique. That was nearly 30 years ago though. Since then G.I. Joe has fallen out of the public view. With the exception of a couple live action movies, those movies didn't raise the profile of G.I. Joe very much. Now, Snake Eyes is not overexposed. Nothing in G.I. Joe is overexposed. Snake Eyes may have regained a little bit of his cool factor. He's supposed to get a solo movie next year. I hope it does him justice. That was my review of Snake Eyes version 3. Thank you again to Codename New 2 Vero 2 for joining me. Don't forget to check out his channel. He covers a lot of stuff there that I don't cover here. Hey, HCC, I gotta tell you something. You gotta watch out for that Timmer guy. I mean, I wonder what his neighbors think of him. You got this crazy guy with the mask, with the wand and bulletproof underwear, and I wonder what they think. That'd be a great interview, Timmer's neighbors. 
All right, back to you, HCC. Snake eyes! That's a good point. I'm gonna have to keep my eye on that guy. He does seem like the kind of person who would launch an evil, universe-destroying plan. If you remember G.I. Joe from your childhood and you still enjoy G.I. Joe, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. Thank you to all my patrons who make the these videos possible. If you like the channel and you'd like to support the channel in that way, please check out my Patreon. You can find out how to decode the secret messages you see in my videos. I'll see you next week when I will be reviewing something that one of you sent me. I'll see you then, and until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Am I happy that one of my favorite characters died? Yes, because Snake Eyes' death had meaning.